hey guys and welcome back to my channel so today's gonna be a quick video it's actually gonna be in two parts so as you guys can tell from the title of the video i am having another surgery yes y'all the third time's the charm i knew this was gonna happen Call. you call babe i'm sitting down filming a video all right babe, come on let's go how is it time to go? I'm sitting down filming a video. Babe, we gotta go. Like, babe, the place don't even open to one. It's 15 minutes away. I thought you said you was gonna go. I knew you was gonna come back in like two seconds. I see, I got like four minutes of vlog footage. What did you say? Boom, 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 boom. Add up 20 minutes and I'm good. So now you want me to just be on your time? Like it. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, Keisha here and welcome back to my channel. So you already saw the first clip of um, my breast augmentation update video while I was in Miami. I believe that was like the day before I even had the surgery and then it got cut short because I had to go and um, eat and a whole bunch of other stuff. So anyways, I'm here. I'm back in Atlanta. It's about four days post-surgery and I'm feeling a lot better today than I have been in my last few days. So I wanted to come while I have the energy to come and give you guys a detailed um, video pretty much about the dangers of having plastic surgery. I'm pretty sure we all know um, most of the dangers but I kind of wanted to give my experience with this because I did elect to have a breast augmentation after um, having my three daughters and breastfeeding and pumping the entire um, post pregnancies and it was a lot on my body you guys I have always had like a smaller cup size I was like 34 B before I even got pregnant and once I got sized and measured for my first procedure I was like an A like almost non-existent and i first off want to start by saying that it is 100 percent okay to love your body in all stages of your life um before having children during um your pregnancy after i know we look in the mirror and we see things and we're like real nitpicky about it i personally decided to do this on my own um uh, i didn't do it for anyone else i just knew what i looked like before having kids and i was okay with having smaller breasts um but I just felt like once they were completely non-existent it kind of like made me in a way insecure and i'm like oh my gosh like what happened to my boobs i'm never gonna get them back like i can do i can go to the gym and i can work out and get you know girl butt i can you know go and subscribe for a membership and you know pretty much fix anything else i want to fix on my body in the gym um however my boobs is one thing that i just cannot fix without having a surgery surgery another thing i did develop diastasis recti after having my twins so my diastasis kind of grew a little bit bigger once i had my mini jewelry and so now i'm having two problems so i was not only just looking at my boobs and not being content with the size that they were anymore but i also had to worry about my diastasis and if you guys don't know what diastasis is it's the separation of your ab muscles so since i'm very petite i'm under 100 pounds it is very obvious that i have diastasis and sometimes people can um, get it if you don't know what diastasis is and all those different things and certain um, clothes on certain particular days I can look either extremely bloated or like is she pregnant she's not pregnant but that's just what happened after postpartum so I had two different things in my torso area that were like eyesores for me personally um, and I considered correcting my diastasis recti until I found out I absolutely had to get a version of a tummy tuck to do so and I went and got opinions from several doctors and most of them did not even feel confident with proceeding with the surgery for me and myself I was extremely terrified so I felt like that was my sign to just leave it alone so fast forward I decided you know what I can do something about my chest area that's something I actually did talk about prior like while I was in college like maybe one day I would get a breast augmentation but since I didn't need it and I was for the most part content with my size I didn't move forward with it while I was in college it was just kind of like a thought um so now after having my mini um jewelry and breastfeeding and just going through all the different changes I went through postpartum depression really really heavy I just decided I wanted to do something for myself so I went ahead and I started doing many consultations or not many but verb what am I trying to say virtual consultations because I didn't have any doctors that were in consideration in Atlanta but that's where I'm from um so I, I did a consultation with someone in Chicago and my other option was someone that was in Texas now I went ahead and went with the Texas 
doctor because she actually did do someone's surgery who I knew personally. And I'm like, okay, well, if she looks good, I can look good. So let me just start off by saying there's a lot of things that go into searching for a doctor. One, doing your thorough research about the doctor and how many procedures that went wrong or the reviews and testimonials and all that because just like you on your own page when you take a picture you may take 15 pictures the one that you think makes you look the best and you're you're showing your best version of yourself that's the one that makes it to your page you won't show the one where you're off guard the one that looks kind of crazy from you to the side or whatever it is so that's kind of how it is with surgeries you're you can go to someone's instagram page and everything looks good but we need to do some research because we need to figure out which ones didn't make it to the page and things like that so another thing that i want to give advice for if you guys like i said i'm not condoning i'm not telling anyone to go do this i'm just telling you guys my experience how things went wrong and why why i had to get another surgery this time around um outside of the previous two surgeries and everything i'm gonna try my best to share pictures but i am topless braless and all of that and all the pictures i'm trying to figure out how to do that um maybe i can put some hearts on top i don't know y'all i don't know i don't want to get flagged for the video so i'm trying to figure out how to do it but you guys are very detailed when i speak so you all can just bear with me in case i can't put the pictures up so anyways um the second set of advice that i want to give when you're searching for your doctor is to not only look for the testimonials of the people who didn't make it to the page by doing deeper research looking on google or whatever typing the doctor's name in make sure they're board certified you also want to look at at the the models or not the models but the people who they've done surgery on are most of their clients similar to your size do they have like some doctors are able to work well on all body types like you can have you know you can be overweight not I'm not saying it to be rude but you can be overweight and a doctor could literally you know give you the results that you want some doctors cannot work with you if you're overweight it may not look as good as if you are just coming with just a little extra cushion or fat or whatever to just insert wherever you see fit um and then there's also me someone who's petite so i was very careful to look at the doctors and seeing that they had petite clients so um yeah so i didn't see my exact body type but since i since i had someone who I knew in real life in, in person and I've seen her in person with her um, her procedure and I love the way it looked, I kind of was like, you know what, let me just go to her because you came out, you turned out great, so let me just do that. Um, another thing, once you get to the doctor, you need to know, you need to pay attention in the um, pre-op. So that's kind of where things went wrong for me. So in my pre-op, in my with my first surgery, I had my first surgery um, about, six months after stopping breastfeeding because they want you to wait like six months to a year so six months after i stopped breastfeeding my mini um i had my pre-op um or i had my surgery schedule and i live in atlanta so i had to do my pre-op like right as soon as i got there so the day before my procedure i went there and we looked at my bare area and we were able to see the imperfections it is also very vital that you find a doctor who knows how to work with imperfect like imperfect breasts um so at that time, if I knew what I knew now or I paid attention a little bit harder, maybe I wouldn't have been in this predicament. But I, I think at that point, it was like for me, it was too late because it was already the day before the surgery. And I paid for all of my surgeries in full up front. Like as soon as I booked it, I'm paying for everything. Um, so I it was already paid for. And I paid for traveling and all these other things like that. So anyways, in my pre-op, we obviously know I breastfed. So there were a lot of different imperfections with the way my one breast set. One breast was actually larger than the other. And one um, was lower sitting than the other. One nipple was inverted, whereas the other one kind of was like straight away. Um, and the doctor did let me know, hey, like the way I do surgeries, you're going to pretty much have the exact same aftermath as how you look now. They're just going to be bigger. So any imperfection you have now is just going to be like magnified, I guess. And I was like, okay, that's cool. So fast forward, I had the surgery. My downtime the first time around was not that bad. Like literally that same day we went out, had dinner. Everything was good. Um, I had to, I, I, I went through the breakdown of how um, to properly take care of myself and have my boyfriend take care of me as well. Everything went great. Um, it wasn't until like maybe two weeks after that surgery when I got back to Atlanta and I literally, one of my incisions, which my left one, it started to leak. It was bleeding really, really, really bad. I don't remember how much I talked about about my procedures on my platform. Um, 
but it was really 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 bad mind you i don't live in texas so that's another thing be very cognizant of getting your surgery out of state and knowing how much communication you'll be able to have with your doctor um so the first doctor i went to i can give kudos in that area because they were like their the assistant as well as the doctor was emailing me texting me dming me calling me facetiming whatever i needed like i had that right at my my fingertips um however my left boob started to bleed and since i wasn't in person we didn't know the cause of it and it was profuse like it was bleeding you guys it's bleeding bleeding not like spots it was bleeding um after that um maybe about six months after that once it started, did stop bleeding i didn't have to go into the emergency room because she said it could be a number of different things and uh, six months after my surgery of course you got to send your updated pictures your videos and we started knowing there was some we noticed that there was some app normalities in my frame of my breast so she didn't know if it was because of that bleeding that occurred or you know or what it could have possibly been so i, I was t told to start wearing a band over oh, y'all remember that i had to wear a band to see if there was like maybe a clot that had formed from that blood but i didn't have that surgery in um in atlanta so and i could have obviously went to another surgeon but since i had so much communication and the bleeding did stop and everything seemed like it was going great until the six months follow-up then you know I, I just thought everything was going great so anyways needless to say after that first appointment we got to the six month mark we realized that i would have to have surgery again we could not determine whether well really it's not on me but it was on the doctor she could not determine or figure out which which breast needed to have surgery i did so much research and this is where i went wrong and i have to hold myself accountable because i would not have been where i'm at now if i just would have remembered when i watched all the mini videos so if you're thinking about having a surgery or anything like that or if you had a surgery or whatever please take heed to what i'm about to say if at any time you have to have a revision on your breast, do not, I repeat, do not have a revision on just one breast. Get the entire, the whole set, uh, I was about to say renovated, but get the whole entire set. Um, uh, Y'all, what's the word? Have the surgery on both. Have the surgery on both. So when she told me it was either one or the other, she was trying to figure out if it was the left one. Since it didn't go down with the band, she still did not know and we still had not ran any tests to see if it was med a medical reason as to why there was an issue with my left one. So we just, she, she said, okay, come back. I'll do the surgery for you. All I had to pay was for the anesthesiologist and travel and all that stuff. So still added up to over 3,000 I had to spend again to get down there and have all this done. But she was a doll face, like I said, she redid. She, I didn't have to pay her, I just had to pay for the anesthesiologist the uh, Airbnb and traveling flights and all that. So, and that time all of my daughters came. But anyways, so um, we got down there. I strongly thought that it should be the left one. She strongly thought it should be the right one, that maybe the right one was the issue. And since I didn't have any more bleeding after it, when she squeezed it, it seemed like it was still soft. So she was like, well, maybe what I thought happened didn't happen. So I'm gonna go with the right one. And I was like, hey, do you think we can just open both of them up? Because I'm not really comfortable. This one now has been healing for all this time. And now this one's gonna be freshly open. She told me that she was not going to remove the implant. She was just gonna open me up, push, it a little higher into my muscle and close me back up okay so fast forward another six months after that pre-op we realized something else was wrong um my right breast was very sensitive and i never disclosed any of this on my vlog my right breast was really sensitive and my scarring of both of them were completely in different places so in the scar with this one was thicker i hope i have a picture of my scar y'all i meant to do the video before i had the surgery but jeremy had came into the hotel room and i'm like damn now i don't have a skirt no more so i can i'm gonna look back at my pictures and i'm pretty sure i showed but by the time the day before the surgery it was probably worse than the pictures i had in my phone um but i still try to put it on the screen but either way it goes i had a, it was a very sensitive aggravating scar like my my breast was very aggravating like to wear a bra to wear certain things hugging tight on my breast it was very sensitive and at that point we still cannot figure out the doctor told me the doctor who revised the right one she looked at my post op again after the six after the six months went by after doing the right one she looked at the pictures and she said actually i realized it's the left one i think that when that bleeding occurred the first time around there was a clot that formed and it's not allowing the implant to settle down so we need to go in like seriously to remove the whole entire implant out and ensure that there's no clot that has formed or it could create severe health complications so i said that to say you guys had i with my my initial intuition I already had okay guys so my first surgery was may 7th my second surgery was october 10th the same year as you can see this email is from april which is exactly six months from my um second surgery and this is where we i sent in my my photos 
had the video consultation with the doctor, and this is what was determined, that they wanted to go in. This was their treatment plan, and like they gave me the price quote for everything. But yeah, so this is where it says the left breast augmentation needs to be revised pretty much, and they need to remove the scar tissue from the inside and replace the actual implant. I told myself if I had to do a revision, I would just go to another doctor because I saw so many videos, and I'm not gonna call the girls' names out, but they were talking about their revision after revision after revision, and then they just ended up having to go to a different doctor. But my gut kept telling me like, you know, it was hard for me to process this because I found this information out a while ago. It was hard for me to process it because life was just so busy for me. Like we had so much stuff going on. I'm like, there's no downtime for me to have another surgical procedure right now. But as time went on, my right breast became more and more and more aggravated and sensitive. And I just knew like there is no way I could live like this. Um, and obviously she was extremely concerned that there was a reason why the left one was not settling properly because when we look at the before pictures, the left one, based off those pictures, wouldn't have been the one that was sitting higher if there was an issue. I did get 225cc or something like, whatever it was I got, I'm gonna put it across the screen. I can't remember off the top of my head and I just wanna go straight through this video, you guys. But whatever it was, whatever those cc's were, she actually told me I had no choice but to get those, no, I don't wanna say it like that, okay. She recommended that I stuck with like the smallest possible possible CC um, for my framing like I said I'm under 100 pounds and she was very nervous about this that, and the third was my tiny frame and things like that so she decided to stick with them both implants were the exact same size so we shouldn't have had those issues so she thought there was trapped blood um, and, tr and scar tissue internally damaging why this implant could not sit down so she knew no matter what i felt so when she told me i had to get the left one done and not the right one i told her my right one is the one is bothering me so much so we got to figure something out because we're gonna have to open this up and figure out how we're gonna fix this scar the scar is not in the right place so there's obviously something else going on with the right one because the scar is not in the right place but she still felt like okay we can figure out another ultimate like alter, ultimatum for the right one we'll just still going with the left one and of course i'll take care of it again you just come down here and i'll take care of it um i thought a lot long and hard about it and i prayed about it because i'm just like oh my gosh like i don't really know and it, it was winter time when we discussed this or getting into winter or something like that i forgot y'all because i had the second follow-up in october so i had the first surgery in may i had the revision done the same year october and by January, February is when I'm like, okay, I've had the revision. The right one is now settling down after, you know, it settles down within eight weeks. So after eight weeks, we noticed the right one was settling down and it was still settled lower than the left. So we knew, well, she knew there must be some complications internally with the left one. It may not be hurting you or anything like that, but it could be some, in, some internal issues. So it needs to come out and we need to start that one over. But like I said, since I decided that I, the right one was bothering me as well, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna just, open up the left one like i don't want to keep going through the same thing with you know paying hokey pokey with which group is the problem and like i said these are the things that you have to think about um um when you're having plastic surgery and i'm only, I'm only sharing this to help women out there um like i said i wasn't even going to talk about this on my platform i was going to get the surgery and let it be that because it was not even really anyone on anyone's business you guys have already been a part of that journey with me and since i didn't technically elect to have this third procedure it was like i had no choice um i was like i'm just gonna go down there but my spirit just has been leading me and just say to share and maybe someone else who's watching this can think twice about their doctors or think twice about all the other things that i'm giving you guys advice or maybe decide not to do it um because you you all may ask me like do you regret um i have some regrets of how like knowing internally like what my gut feeling was telling me about certain things and not acting on it those are the only things i regret um and I was scared shitless to have to do this a third time. Like literally I was like, oh my gosh. Like I wasn't even really that worried the first and second time. I didn't even think about it. I'm like, it's gonna get done, it's gonna be done. But this time around, like I thought of ever since I had paid the money, I was like thinking about it every single day. Like every single day I was like so anxious about it and I was just praying that everything was gonna go great. So moving on to CGC. So I decided one of my friends recommended a doctor at CGC and she was like, this is where you need to go. That, like I'm telling you right now, this is the place you need to go to. This is the best doctor. These are the two best doctors you can either get and look at their work. And I scoped their work and I'm like, oh my gosh. Within looking at their work, you guys, I actually saw a lot of the girls who were really small frame like myself, but I also saw when they talked about the CCs and the breasts, like 
one girl she had one cc in one breast one cc in the other breast i'm like a lot of things started going through my mind maybe the reason i'm having these issues was because since it was one was inverted and one was facing forward and one was smaller one was bigger one was low, lower lying because all these different things maybe i wasn't even supposed to have the same exact implant to begin with like now that's a whole different thing so anyways cgc overall my experience i would say it has it was a 10 out of 10 i would give it that i would give it that um communication wise i did not have as much communication with the doctor at all in comparison to the previous one but i still want to give the 10 out of 10 because the interaction that i did have with dr freeman was amazing and i give him his kudos like he was amazing um and i will show you guys my after I, well you can't see everything but i'll show you guys the after and i kind of want to show you guys my picture of how it looked before with my first procedure like immediately after my my revision how it looked immediately after and like this doctor like night and day i really want to be able to give you guys that so you all can see some things to look out for and to question with your doctor and to make sure and ask all the right questions you guys so anyways i scheduled cgc i don't even remember how long ago but it was probably like a month or two ago but my friend had already told me once i had found out i had to get the second the, my left boob operated on and she was like you got to get that one operated on which was last year sometime i had told my friend um like like what was going on i was telling her i was so stressed out um and he had told me like this is a doctor so i had been watching them and looking at their page for quite a few time and then i actually had a home girl who went somewhere else and i looked up that doctor and then another one of my friends had just had surgery and i looked up her doctor but when i did my extensive research about the reviews and looked at their work to see like how many girls and do i personally feel like looks you know stellar like not that my opinion matters but you know i'm just liking how they're able to sit the the girls up and all the other different things like who's giving the framing of what i'm going for um which checked out to be Doc, dr freeman who's amazing so G cgc is located it's cg cosmetics so they're located in miami i had a coordinator who i was able to speak to the entire time um she was great um i don't really know what else to say about that she i can't remember her name i'll put her name across the screen but she was amazing um i got down there it was a completely different environment than when I went to my first doctor. The first doctor, it was as far as like the the actual building and stuff. I gotta hurry up because I gotta take the girls form. But as far as like the building in itself, like clean, great location, um, very high end. It was it was great. I was the only person in there. Like as far as my appointment. Now both times COVID was at its peak, so maybe they scheduled it that way. Um, but it was. I felt like I was at the chop shop when I went to CGC because I walked in there and it was like 30, 45 girls looking at me. I'm like, oh my gosh, we all here for the same thing. Like, let me go like this. But anyways, I got over there. I did all my paperwork and that, and they had a lot more requirements to even had a surgery than my first one did. Like they made me do a lot more things. If you guys want me to talk about those things and I'll maybe talk about them or maybe I can type it out or something like that. But it was just different. Um, not that vast of a difference but it was a difference of the things that they wanted me to do and compare i was like dang i gotta do this i gotta have this and they said it would take four to five hours it took maybe one or two hours it was a lot of girls i don't know what all the girls got um and then we got scheduled for the next day and i was the very first surgery which was at 7 a.m so i met with dr freeman he came in and i already had like y'all i was like i'm on it this time like i gotta start speaking up because i'm not doing this anymore like i'm already terrified like i'm terrified um so, um, and like I said, it is heavy Spanish speaking. So almost everyone there spoke Spanish. Um, some of them were bilingual. A lot, I mean, a lot of them were bilingual, but um, like, especially working in customer service, but a lot of the girls that were actually getting a service obviously also spoke Spanish. So they were able to do all that. But Dr. Freeman was a Caucasian male. So anyways, I got back there, did all my, I think I did a, a P test when I first got there and all this other stuff at 7 a.m. So y'all feel like I ain't breathing. Dr. Freeman came in, I finally met him. He was great. He was really, really nice. He knew what he was talking about. I showed him my exact before pictures and he said, this is where it went wrong. And then he pointed out the same things I thought about after the fact, like, this is how one boob is sitting, this is how this boob is sitting, this is how it should have been done. This muscle, blah, 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 probably has a blockage. And if it does have a blockage, um, I'm gonna have to do a lot more work to move the muscle of this, all the type of stuff y'all don't care about. So we went over that, hold on. Okay, sorry. So we went over that, we went over the different things particular to my, my, my actual breast. Um, and we, we did not decide a, a size. I just told him like, I would like to go a little bit bigger because I do plan on continuing to gain the weight. Um, so 
and a lot of people also recommend it i didn't know because my previous doctor already had told me like she thought for my frame i should only be at the 225 if that's it, it was 225 or 255 whatever it is like i said it's on the screen so that's just kind of what i was told so i went by that and he asked me like to show the pictures of all of my surgeries and when i woke up everything was great and i had a lot more downtime it was extremely painful like so that means i knew like he must have had to do a lot of work to fix because he said if, i don't know how damaged it is on the inside from how it was done before so if it's a lot of damage you may have a, a longer period of pain like especially the muscle pain um and then we went over like i said everything that was pertinent for my actual breast and um the next day i came back for my follow-up where i was finally able to see what i looked like and i got a card telling me exactly what my sizes were so yes baby i also i, I honestly i can't even remember which size they are now y'all i'm bad with these numbers but i think it's 475 over here and 455 or 455 and 475 so that's the difference is but i will put it across the screen exactly what it was but i was like oh my gosh fours like wow like i went up like that's crazy to me like i didn't even expect it to go up from two to four um and then i already had my my surgical bra before so like i said i will show you guys what i look like now which is like this y'all can see and i kind of open it just a little bit so y'all can kind of see just a little bit um, they are the left side does hurt a lot more than the right side the left side was um well he did rip out both the scars because he said that off the bat like yeah those scars have to go like you should have absolutely no scarring if you follow my procedures and sometimes your body just scars more than others but that that was what it was um and then we did follow up to find because i asked him like okay so when you went inside like what did you see so i'm so happy that i did go ahead and just schedule it because once i realized jory's birthday uh, we had scheduled her party and stuff like i told y'all we planned all that stuff early in january like my whole rest of the year was planned out and i was like oh my gosh i don't want to have all these issues with my right boob bothering me knowing i still need surgery all these different issues and perfections with my breast for my 30th birthday for my daughter's birthday like all the other stuff i got planned i got a lot of stuff planned this year so i was like this is the only downtime i have so i have to go ahead and get this in so yes like i said i am satisfied with how they look i have seen myself obviously outside of my surgical bra and it's like night and day with my first procedure and this procedure like they just look great um but like i said i didn't do this for the aesthetics of it i had no choice but to go in there because it saved my life pretty much being able to remove something that was um uh, uh it was like he said it was um uh, i don't even know medical terms y'all i'm not a doctor but it was some problems with why the left one did not the implant did not move down like it should have there were some issues i don't remember the medical terms that he used so we're just gonna go with what we know y'all unless you're a doctor you probably would understand it so overall like i'm really satisfied and i'm happy that i went ahead and thugged it out um because he did say that i probably would have had um complications moving forward um because sometimes over time like blood can clot and then it could cause even more issues in the way that the, it was not sitting past my muscle or whatever the implant was doing past into my muscle it was not um uh, it was not healing properly and he he does suspect that that time when it was bleeding profusely after i had my first procedure that's kind of what caused it since it was bleeding profusely um and why it started ble bleeding profusely we'll never know I, we can't go back in time and i was not at the doctor for them to x-ray and examine once it stopped bleeding the doctor said i should she said if it does not stop bleeding within a certain time frame then go to the hospital and it did stop bleeding within that certain time frame so i didn't go to the hospital um and i didn't have any bleeding after that um and the scar pretty much did settle but like i said the scar was way below where my boob even was like it's so crazy like it was way below where my boob even was so she just knew like there we have no choice but to open that left one and see why the left one has not settled it must be blocked by some blood or some excess blood or whatever all that stuff was and then like i said for my own comfort and discomfort that i was feeling with my right one i just thought it was in my best interest to just start all the way over so like i said you guys um plastic surgery is something that you really need to think about because had I not had the money to do all these fixes, corrections, and all that, like, I don't remember what my first procedure cost, but I think it was probably around 5000 not including traveling there. And I had to stay there for a week in the Airbnb, have a rental car, um, and then a second time for me to go back again. And then this time, and I paid in full each time. With Once again, we had to go to a hotel and pay for car. Like, 
if you don't even have the money to correct it which some people don't like they save it for that one time hoping it's their last or it works out in the best interest and for the most part it does and i wish you guys the best if you are thinking about having it or if you're going to go get it soon but for myself like i said i'm just so grateful that i was able to go in and get my breast corrected um over and over so i should not have to have any issues we're still healing so cross fingers you guys once we get to that eight week mark and the girl like well actually i take the tape off on thursday um and then we'll still be going i'm not doing any lifting like at all this time around like at all I'm not playing those games um but overall like the way they're sitting like they're both going down like the way they need to and they're doing what they need to so i'll keep you guys updated a little bit throughout the vlogs and stuff um but overall like i said just be very mindful when you all have plastic surgery and what comes with it regardless if you have a breast augmentation or any of those other plastic surgeries out there make sure one you're doing it for yourself not for anybody else you do not want to put yourself or your life at risk yes it was a very hard decision to make to put my life at risk knowing i have three men angels on this earth but i just prayed that god would guide me through this and he knew i wasn't doing it for vain reasons i had talked about it before in earlier years and i finally made that decision once i had not only issues looking at my upper half but my diastasis recti even this time around getting them done jeremy was like so against it he was like not supportive for a while at first and i was like you need to like understand like look at this report from the doctor look at what's going on like i have no choice i have to, i have to go do it he was like oh my gosh i'm tired of this like please let it be over and i understood too because i was tired of it as well but um it just i this is where the chips fail so god just is probably using me as a vessel to just use my my testimony to express to young ladies or older ladies mid-aged ladies ladies in general of the dangers of plastic surgery and things that can happen um and just be mindful throughout the entire procedure just educate yourselves and if you if you guys have any questions then don't hesitate to ask me in a comment section below or i may do like a little mini q a if there's any more questions that you guys have but i feel like i am and you all have to just be very mindful if you're ready to really risk that um so that is everything i'm gonna get off my soapbox now y'all i love y'all so much wish me some happy healing and i will see you guys in the next video bye